So hello and welcome to this Q&A from the Math Subject Knowledge course, Fractions, Decimals and Percentages. Uh, my name is Michael Anderson, uh, one of the presenters on the course and I work at STEM Learning uh, and I'm joined today by Steve. Hello, I'm uh, Steve. Uh, I'm the Maths Lead at STEM Learning and I've been working with Michael on uh, this uh, MOOC. So um, we've got a question um, about ordering fractions. Uh, it's on um, worksheets one, week one's worksheets, uh, question 11C. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that question and see how many different ways we can attempt it. Hopefully you found one of the ways to find the correct answer, um, but I'm also hoping that you'll find another way uh, of perhaps coming to the solution via a different method as well. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so we're asked to order these four fractions in ascending order. So, Steve, what were your first thoughts on this one? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. One is how a student might approach it. And they, they might approach it formulaically because they've been taught a procedure. But if we step back from, from that, one of the first times that students meet fractions it'll be with a diagram so they might start off by just drawing diagrams and shading in the appropriate amount of a rectangle or a, or a circle and seeing if they can tell from their pictures the order in which the fractions could go I suppose the problem is with that one you'll have uh, a rectangle or a block that's cut into fifths and another one in sevenths, another in six, and another one in ninth. And if they're quite close in value, these fractions, using those diagrams, it's quite hard to tell whether you know two sevenths or four ninths is the larger, depending on you know the accuracy of the drawing, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a an idea it's not it's not a perfect method, it's not one that you would use, but it's a starting point, is what students could at least start by doing to get an understanding and a feel for the problem. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, the typical example that you'll see is for students to try and find a common denominator for all of these. Yeah, yeah. So the, the first problem is we're now creating a sub-problem, aren't they? And it's what number will 5, 7, 6 and 9 go into? Mm -hmm. uh, what will they all go into? Well, one way is to just multiply them all together, which gives mm -hmm. you a big number. Yeah, I, I, there is a shortcut to this, though, because um, obviously if any of the denominators have uh, a key factor, a, a common factor, then we can kind of take that common factor out. So if we uh, look at 6 and 9, for example, 6 is 2 lots of 3 and 9 is 3 lots of 3, so we only have to multiply uh, by 3 um, in that example, because they're both a factor of 3. Would that work? Okay, so we've got 5, a 7... We've got 2 times 3, and then we've mm -hmm. got 3 times 3. So we've got to do 5 times 7 times 2 times 3, and then times by another 3, haven't we? So we're looking for a common denominator. It's going to be 5 multiplied by 7 multiplied by, um, well, let's say two. the 6. Oh, sorry. Okay. And let's say, well, one of the 3s in the 9 has already been multiplied by. So 5 times 7 times 6 times 3. Yeah, we'd have to be looking at 5 times 7, and then your 6 is 2 times 3, mm -hmm. and then your 9 is 3 times 3. So we don't need to put the, the extra 3 in, because we've got 3 twice. Uh, it would work, though, if we just did times 6 and times 9, though, I presume? It would, but, uh, yeah, it certainly would, but the numbers would be a little bit bigger. I suppose the easiest is you just multiply them all together, but it's not the most efficient method. Mm -hmm. So if we do that, uh, we end up with a common denominator oops, of uh, 630. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure a lot of students, when looking at this question, will not be delighted to know that the denominator is going to be that big, but uh, it looks like this is the smallest one we, we, we can have for these four uh, different fractions if we'd like to write them all as a fraction over the same amount. So the next step usually would be to take each of these four individual ones and rewrite them as a fraction with a denominator of uh, 630. Hmm. Yeah, so it's a case of making four big fractions, each with the same denominator. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why students are often taught to just find the same denominator is because 
that is how we add fractions we've got to have fraction with the same denominator denominator so we subtract fractions so we've got to have the same denominator but actually we don't need to make the denominators the same looking at the numerators we could actually make the numerators the same so we could create equivalent fractions that all have the same numerator and that would allow us to compare the fractions if that's all we wanted to do so would we do that again by multiplying three times two times five times four yeah we could do three times two times five times four or we can think of the four as two times two so mm -hmm. we've already got a two multiplied in there so it'll be three times two times five and then times two at the end because we've already multiplied by two we've got a factor in there just as we did three to the six times five is 30 times by another two 60 so we'd be looking at 60 as our common numerator rather than 630 as a common denominator so one way is to make them all out uh, something out of 360 uh, yeah. another way would be well in fact we could do a common numerator um, which you said was 60 so 60 over something yeah now, Obviously, for some students, uh, they're going to have to just go, you know, have to go through and find a detail. Uh, the largest value over 360 is going to give you the largest value uh, of fraction. Whereas if you've got a common uh, numerator, then actually the smallest denominator is going to be the larger fraction. Yeah, students might have to think about this in terms of uh, which is the biggest two fifths or two sevenths. And again, looking at that using a diagram, it is. Mm -hmm. As you see a diagram, it's quite easy to see that two fifths is bigger than two sevenths, or yeah. uh, two fifths is bigger than than two ninths, or, so, or something like that. Uh, so this idea is it's a bit counterintuitive. That I, uh, I actually feel looking at the numbers though, Steve, that's probably an easier way of doing it if we're limiting ourselves to not having a calculator present, because it's relatively uh, it's a lot more simple to multiply, say, the three over five by 20, both the top and the bottom, to get a fra equivalent fraction, as opposed to figuring out how many fives go into 630 and multiplying both of the top and the bottom by that value. So that seems to be a nicer way of um, of doing it kind of mentally, or at least using yeah. written methods uh, without a calculator. If you have got a calculator, then of course you can turn each of them into a decimal and then compare the decimals. So yeah, two fifths, so. uh, three fifths will be 0 0.6, and and mm -hmm. two sevenths will be something quite nasty, not 0.28 yeah. something something something. Uh, uh, but if you've got a calculator, it, it it's got you some uh, rounding. Uh, you can round up, you can compare. So we can certainly turn each one of those into a decimal just by uh, doing the the numerator divided by the the denominator. But again, you would need your calculator for that. I think um, even if uh, even if that is a method, you can probably get a little bit of mathematical understanding there just by looking or comparing the numerators and the denominators. And so, mm -hmm. just for example, you can see that well, five over six is over halfway, so mm -hmm. three sixths would be a half. So five six is over a half. Whereas if you look at four ninths, uh, then four is less than half of nine. So I think five six is definitely going to be larger than four ninths, even without. Uh, typing it into my calculator and I think that's an important skill that students don't just rely on that calculator pressing mm. and whatever the calculator says is the correct answer that they can actually kind of uh, reason and justify and go yeah this is the solution it seems to make sense I think that's something that we we don't we don't ask of students often enough is, is mm. to just reason the way through it and to explain the reasoning uh, we very often want a method like just like we, we've just gone through you know you can make that same that same you can make them into decimals uh, but I think going back to where we started you know sometimes just having to think and trying to trying to work your way through it yeah. one of my nicest way the, the ways I, I like to look at comparing uh, fractions is to actually link it with gradients of graphs which seems a little bit you know uh, out there a little bit but it works really nicely so if you just draw a set of axes a simple set of axes draw a horizontal axes and then uh, a vertical so you just want the um, the one quadrant Steve positive or would this work yeah. with negatives as well yeah. it, it, uh, 
we just need it for the positive quadrant for this one because we've only got positive numbers uh i think once you get into negatives you'd uh it'd be a big good investigation to have a look at mm -hmm. but it's still work for negatives okay so i've got my axes okay so on the horizontal we put the denominator oops uh, so this is going to be my denominator which i'll just put as a d and then the numerator will be on the, on the uh, okay numerator on the vertical so we think of three fifths we, we if we can put some markings along we'll have to go up to nine on the denominator won't we so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten for look one two three four five okay so drawing three fists then it's going to be five along the denominator and one two three the four, numerator. Five, and if we just put across there so that is my uh three fifths so two sevenths so we roughly plot two sevenths so one two three four five six seven and then one two upwards is going yeah. to be somewhere around there for my two over seven and we've got f six along the denominator and five up the numerator so five, so six, six. one two three four five six one two three four five all the way up here is five six now i presume steve you'd like students to be a little bit more accurate than uh, than what i'm doing on here would you recommend graph paper and uh, pencil yeah yeah i mean if you're fairly accurate it'll work <laughs> and unless uh, yeah it would be best if you actually potted it properly uh, but you can even use uh, even use uh, a graph plotter and plot them on the graph plotter okay four ninths is our final one okay so we're going all the way across to nine up to four and we have four over nine there so so if we join each of those points to the origin we've got we'll get four lines and the fraction will actually represent the gradient of each of those lines so the line with the greatest gradient will be the fraction that is the largest so we can put them into order by looking at the gradients of each of the lines so if i was to compare if i just use this ruler steve Hmm. Five six seems to be uh, the greatest value of fraction because that's the one that my ruler is coming to first when it goes through the origin. Yeah, you just draw that line in. Mm -hmm. So the biggest fraction is five six. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then we've got four ninths, then, th uh, oh, then three fifths, and then four ninths, and then mm -hmm. two sevenths. Just looking at the steepness of the, of the lines. It's a different way of thinking about it. Yeah, that's really nice because I suppose the thing that I mentioned earlier about uh, comparing whether they're greater or larger than a half, we could put that line in uh, where all the, the the coordinate points would be um, two along and one up or four along and two up or whatever kind of uh, relationship you had or equivalent fractions to a, a half. So three over six, six along, three up, and that would give us a dotted line, uh, which I presume would have a gradient which would be uh, steeper than two sevenths and four ninths, but it would be more shallow than these two here, so it kind of come across somewhere along there. Yeah, yeah. it's a good link between fractions and uh, and graphs and gradients. Uh, one that's rarely made, I think. Oh, really nice. Uh, which probably brings us on to a, a course I'd recommend next, Steve, which would be uh, our, our, our other uh, subject knowledge course, which is all about graphs, uh, functions and equations. I think what we've seen today is, is how maths links together because we started off by looking at uh, highest common factors and lowest common multiples and that's something we cover in the understanding number course well and of course we've got equivalent fractions which is all to do with scaling up and scaling down which we cover in the proportional reasoning course mm, so although they're all defined uh, distinct courses uh, the actual maths that we're covering uh, links in a lot of different ways. You can see this as a recurring theme in in each of the subject knowledge courses that are currently on FutureLearn. Yeah, and we, we show how uh, what seemingly different aspects of maths actually are, are 
deeply connected this maths is a deeply uh, connected subject and uh, it's really useful to to draw out those connections and highlight those to students